Good morning, welcome. <clears throat> My name is Catherine. I want to welcome you all here. At Land of the Sky United Church of Christ, we are people of God's extravagant welcome. Whether you are young or old, gay or straight, or somewhere in between, single or partnered, happy or sad, confused or inspired, street smart or college educated, whether you can't pay your bills or have more than enough to share, we honor you, your racial identity, your gender expression, your disabilities and your abilities, your passions and your voice. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome in this place at this time to worship the God who meets us here just as we are, no exception. Good morning. Friends, if you are a newcomer uh, visiting with us for the first time today, we are so very grateful for your presence among us. We invite you to use one of the action cards found on the clipboards on the, underneath the seat in front of you um, to share information that we may be in touch. Uh, you may also share information on the back of your bulletin here. We would ask that you would um, drop completed information in the baskets at the door um, as you go today. And uh, we hope that you'll provide us an email or an address that we might connect with you in the coming week. Um, if you're at home, a link will drop into your chat box. So you have an option and opportunity there. Those action cards can be used to spur the church into action as needed, including prayer requests, as today is Communion Sunday, and we will not have public prayer time. Um, you can always use the link in your e-news for um, the prayer padlet um, or for a private prayer um, request that would go directly um, to me, or you can drop those prayer requests into the offering baskets as you go today. If you are joining from home, we invite you to gather your elements for communion now, bringing what you have, assured that God crosses all boundaries and meets you right where you are. In um, person here uh, on site, we share in communion by the ancient practice of intinction. That involves tearing a piece of bread from the common loaf and dipping it into the common cup. Uh, juice and wine is available. Gluten-free crackers and juice is marked. And for those who desire a less communal experience in these days of the winter and these days post pandemic or not really um, post, but wherever it is, uh, there are individualized communion elements on the table and they will be brought around and out. I would also like to remind you that today is intergenerational worship where our kids stay the whole service and they delight us with their joy and laughter and sometimes their frustrations and noise and um, we celebrate that so uh, be mindful that Jesus beckoned the little ones to come to him and that we are to experience God uh, like children let us indeed learn from them. You can read a little bit about our commitments to having kids in worship on the insert printed here. You will also see um, that I have this, we need seven, but we don't because we already have four people signed up online. Go team, go. Um, and then uh, LaShawna and I make uh, five and six. So we actually just need one human being who wants to assist with um, communion. Page is on it. Casey, you're already doing it, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Okay, I can't have you twice. Um, I mean, you are a big, you, you, you're, you know, but I, you're literally just one person. Um, <laughs> your spirit is big, but I can't have you on two things. So uh, friends, when uh, the time comes forward, we ask that you, you will be invited forward. Uh, thank you for those willing to serve today. And um, today is All Souls Day, um, a reminder that in this time of year, Thanksgiving, um, Halloween, um, All Souls, All Saints Day, All Souls Day, there are a variety of liturgical holidays all woven together. Um, in our Latinx and Hispanic communities, they have Dia de las Muertes. Um, it is a time when the veil is thin, when our um, space between the here and the there, the now and then um, is, uh, is a little less um, concrete and a little more liminal. And so today we acknowledge that we have lost in um, this 
community, um, three deeply important souls in the last year since our last um, All Souls Day, Elizabeth Matterin, um, who we miss and love deeply, uh, who died nearly a year ago, and um, also this summer, the loss of Pat uh, Washan and Kay Mance. Um, we um, have candles lit for them here, and um, later when um, in the service, you will be invited to come forward with your intergenerational activity, um, which happens on these tables. So, and this table over here, you'll see it's um, in the mask section. So what does that mean? You have to wear a mask to go there, okay? So, um, but there are three other much larger tables for the rest of you, so don't worry, you are not being kept from anything. Those, um, those tables hold a couple of different activities and you can read about them more intentionally there. But there are angels that um, you can put together or um, doves, and on that you can write the name of um, people you have lost, uh, people you want to remember, and then as we come forward for communion later, you will be invited to come forward for communion and then you will be invited to hang it here okay so um, it'll all work out when it happens you'll see other people doing it you'll remember it will be good so <laughs> Um, it is always a gift to have the Reverend Lashana Austria with us. I am grateful for her presence among us back up in the mountains. Um, last week she was online during the um, con congregational meeting. However, she was silenced by the lack of our internet figuring it out. I know. We were hoping to hear from her then, but today we will hear from her, her so that is good. Um, I would um, invite you all to center yourself into this space and to prepare yourself for worship, and I would invite Yolanda forward for the ringing of the singing bowl. That's what I've got. You can put your hand on it. I know what this will be look this is this what a perfect day for Yolanda to teach us how to use a singing bowl this little cushion on the bottom holds the singing bowl and if you hold the actual singing bowl while you hit it then it will get it won't sing okay I bet you're gonna do I'm nothing if not a teacher Peace flow in 
into my heart letting calm rest upon my soul letting go letting go in you the wheel of the year is ever turning and we have seen that summer has slowly but surely melted away into autumn yay my favorite Many say that this is the time of the year where the veil between the earthly plane and the spirit realm is thinner. I personally hope so. Regardless of what we believe. Sorry, I thought I could do this. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Regardless of what we believe, when it comes to an afterlife, our loved ones and our ancestors live on in our memories. Their existence, therefore, remains with us long after their physical bodies have passed. As we celebrate all souls and the dearly departed today, let us seek guidance and wisdom from those who are not with us physically. Let us reflect on the legacy they have left for us to continue and honor the life and love they gave while they were here on this earth. Will you join me in this prayer? O oh God of all things in all realms, we thank you for those who came before us, for those who have made us who we are. We pause now to name them silently in our hearts. We honor the lives that they lived, and we thank you, O oh God, for the gift of remembrance which lives in our hearts and souls. Grant us comfort in the loss of those we love so much. Grant us strength to carry on. Remind us that every day our dearly departed are with us in our hearts. They are part of our lives in every word we say and every breath we breathe. Bless us, O oh God, with the remembering we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please rise. No, wait. <laughs> hey, y'all. We're going to sing our opening song. <laughs> so we invite you all, as you feel willing and able, to rise and sing with us. We will sing For All the Saints. You may find this in your New Century Hymnal on page 299 <clears throat> or in your online bulletin.
On site, I invite you to remain standing as you are able. Um, if you are at home, your Zoom room will give you some space to share the peace of Christ with one another. Here um, on site, I encourage you to remember that people's body language or their name tag might indicate the proximity needs and desires they have. As you share the peace of Christ, may it be with intention and consent. The peace of Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hi. Peace be with you. Thanks. Good morning. Good to see some faces. <laughs> Good morning. Pamela, thank you for making this possible. Oh, I'm always so happy to have the option myself <laughs> at home. Yeah, it's a good, good crowd today. And everybody's what time is it? Who am I? What's <laughs> no matter which way the hour goes, it's yeah. <sighs> yeah, it looks like it in the camera angle there, it's like a pretty good crowd. I feel like there's I'm missing my writing fix from people. You know, I see Christina over there too. And good to see people. I know. I'm I'm gonna make one of those workshops. It is <laughs> it'll just go through November probably and then we'll move on. Yeah. We'll move back to where well, we Well, I are. hope all your things are coming together yeah. well. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. A little bumpy, but all in all, okay. There we go. Still standing. Yeah. Still standing. <laughs> That's right. Good morning. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Knocking things over. Okay, here we go. You can always put it. That's not a bad idea to get back to that. Hi. You guys trying to figure out who's the both side. The other two side. Okay, excellent. Hello, Vivian. Good to see you. Okay. Now I'm gonna get on the floor and I may not be able to get back up. So okay. Oh, thank you. It's so rough. Um Okay. Well, I don't know if you heard early in the service, I talked about something and we just sang a song. It was called For All the Saints. What day is today? Do you have any thoughts about what day today besides Sunday? Yes. For All Saints Day? It's All Saints Day. So it's like a day that we celebrate all of the saints of the church. Um, there is some differences that the, um, that the universal church makes about um, the souls and the saints, I'm like, eh, it's like, 
Um, let's just be clear, um, you know, some people stress on the saints part, they're like, I'm not saying enough. And I'm like, listen, it's just all of us, okay? So here's the thing, today, um, part of what we are talking about when we're talking about the saints or the souls, about this time of year, what do you think we are, we are constant focusing on? Yes. Saints. Okay, yes. Um, what um, specifically, what might have ha what what has happened to these saints? Yes. God. Oh well, God happened to them. That's excellent. Yes. Um, helping people. Yeah. Well, saints definitely help people. That's one of the things they do. Yes. Letting go. Ooh. Okay. We're getting closer. We're getting. You paid attention to all the songs. Yes. <gasps> ah. Um. <laughs> Mama Lee's like, look. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, that is one of the things. So on All Saints, also this time of year, we are thinking about the people who God happened to, right? Like God formed them, made them. Um, they went out to the world. They were God's people. They did the things of God. And then um, we are um, thinking about the, um, the letting go. And, and also specifically, we are thinking about the folks in our lives who have died. What, is, what does it mean when we die? Uh -huh. We don't um, we don't um, live with other people anymore. Yeah, it's very, that's an interesting, so we don't live with other people. We're out of the world. We're out of the world, okay. This is, it's really hard to talk about oh, what happens. We're not living. We're not living. We're not living anymore. We're not living anymore, excellent. Okay, so um, <coughs> when we die, it means that our bodies are, our bodies will stop working. So at some point, you might have had a grandparent or, oh, hold on one second, okay. You might have had a grandparent or you might be very lucky and not, at, and your grandparents might all be living. Um, so maybe a great grandparent or maybe your parents have told you about a great grandparent or maybe you've had a friend of the family or someone who has, um, who is no longer physically with us. Hold on one second. And um, <laughs> so um, what happens is at some point in our living, right? Like we get born and then we get to be here, and then at some point, um, our bodies stop working and we die. And when that happens, part of what happens to our body, um, there are lots of different ways that we, um, we deal with our body, the part, but um, we're not just our bodies. We are also- Our spirits. Our spirits, yeah. The souls within us. If you take a deep breath, that is the breath of life. That is the spirit. The word ruach, breath, is um, the Hebrew word. It's a Hebrew word. It's a reminder of this thing that God breathes into us. And on All Souls Day, we remember the people whose physical body may no longer be with us, but whose spirit is all among us. And so um, on the table, I need your help. I don't know if you can, I, it's funny because what are the chances that I brought the one angel that doesn't have two um, cuts in it? But um, <laughs> so, bring me, come on, bring me a cut. There you go. Uh, perfect. Yeah, it's very, so he, thank you. Okay, did you make this one? No. Oh, it was on the table, fantastic. So here back on those tables, you will see these, okay? You can also cut them out if you want. But I want you, maybe with your parents, and your parents too, and all the adults in the room, I want Lashana to really feel what it's like when you preach on Intergenerational Sunday. <laughs> um, so, but you will write the name of someone that you um, love and someone that may no longer be with us physically on this, and then you are going to put your angel together. This, look at this. These have little, uh, your parents might help. Look at that, is that the cutest? Oh my gosh, they're so cute, yes, they are. So you can write it, and then you can write it on the inside or the outside, it's up to you. And then in, you'll see there are hooks there, and when we have communion, adults are listening to this too, you will bring your angel or your dove. What about both? Or both. 
And you will come and you'll hang them at the front. And we will have all these memories hung from the front, okay? Can you help out that way? Excellent, excellent. So I hope that as you are sitting in worship today, you might, um, last month, we, were, we had lots and lots of noise. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. So sometimes in worship, um, we practice sort of being more still like we did last week in kids time um, or not using our voices so much. So while um, the uh, well, Reverend Lashana is sharing the word, you might do this and do it with um, gentle, gentle stillness. Um, help with your parents writing the names down. Can you do that? Excellent. Excellent. All right. Let's take a deep breath. And let it out. Will you pray with me? God of our bodies and God of our spirits, we are so grateful for this world that we get to live in. But we fear not, for beyond here is you still. God, you hold us in your arms. Your spirit holds us here and holds us in the next place. Help us to trust in the promises of your peace for us and for those we love who have moved beyond this world. We pray this name in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. So this is a day you don't go um, to Sunday school. You stay here with us. And I'm so excited about that. I'm also I'm excited to see you be a little disappointed you don't get to go to Sunday school. It's just like how fun Sunday school is. Go Vicky. Um, but you can head back to one of the tables and your parents can help you out. You can um, just remember this table up here is for the masked people. And as we move into the reading of the scripture, um, our time for hearing the sermon and um, for our time um, of communion. No, that is an opportunity for you to be up and about. That's how the intergenerational service works. Move when you feel called. Um, let us see our kids to their spaces. <sighs> Getting up now. <laughs> Ooh. Um, I would invite Yolanda forward for the reading of the scripture. No, is that not now? Okay, hold on. That mic's not time. I, I pulled it out of nowhere, but hold on. I do actually think, I do, I don't know. You got signed up for a bunch of things. You did. This is a special day. Um, yes. So um, actually, I did time for giving. Okay. Ah, uh, friends, a uh, couple of things. Um, first off is Thanksgiving. Oh, Catherine's so excited. Okay, so as am I, every year at Thanksgiving time, um, Thanksgiving Day, we have a meal here that is a potluck meal. Um, Catherine and Carl host it with the, sort of some leadership around it, uh, but it is hands on and everyone is invited. Um, it was interesting because someone said to me, um, who was it? Somebody said to me this week, does, how many people, oh, it was Sydney in the office. She said, I mean, do you guys have a lot of people come to that? And I said, well, yeah, actually a lot of people do come to that. Like it costs a lot of money to make a Thanksgiving meal for two, or if you're not going to a big meal, or if you don't want to go out and spend a lot of money. And it is a place to do um, Thanksgiving in a way that's sustainable and uh, more simple and um, everyone is invited. So if that is something you are called to um, in your e-news, there is a place to do it. You will also see after the service some slides run through and that will have a QR code that you could link on to the sign up sheet. Um, if you're thinking, wow, food, I love food. Um, I want to tell you that next Sunday evening, um, there is a spaghetti dinner for our youth hosted by our youth. And I hope that you all will be here. Um, it will be around um, 6.15. Um, 6.30 is the start time. Everyone is invited. We ask for a suggested donation of $10 a head. That is a way you can help support our youth. If you are um, thinking, wow, I would really like a plate of spaghetti and maybe a little salad and to be in community, um, and I don't want to make dinner next Sunday night, it's a perfect um, time for you to come to that event. You will see things popping up online all about that all week long. So I hope that you will um, check that out. 
Finally, uh, today after worship, um, pop-up snacks and following, it's the, like midway through pop-up snacks, you're going to hear a call to um, a conversation about threshold partnership that will be in our conference room. If you are someone who's um, a friend of the church or, or just showing up, you are welcome to come and learn more about the ways we deepen our commitments and partnerships with one another. <sighs> um your giving makes this community possible um it's through the light and love of so many of us we give thanks for the gifts and the givers as you leave today you are welcome to leave any bulletin um, that has information uh, action cards and financial gifts for the ministries of the church in the offering baskets you can also um, make a donation online you'll see the information there how to do it and talking about the gift of community we just got um, Steph Hickling Beckman back from across the pond. She uh, was uh, traveling the world and um, still uh, expressed maybe feeling a little bit of that world travel um, lag. Uh, so I'm grateful for her willingness to come and provide um, a short testimony for us today about Threshold Partnership before Yolanda opens the scriptures for us. Good morning, Land of the Sky. I love how Sarah prefaced this with short testimonial. Um, she does know me. Um, so as we approach Commitment Sunday, um, what better time than to talk about how I stumbled upon Land of the Sky and what makes me want to become and stay a Threshold member. So um, my family chose to stop dating and finally make a commitment to land of the sky about a year after we started attending and short answer for that is because i care about the growth and the success of this church long answer is that when i stumbled upon land of the sky almost 10 years ago the last place that i was looking for was a church home i'd been in one of those before and it had not gone well at all um, it had been 20 years since i'd entered a church before i came to land of the sky why i came here was that i was looking for a church to give money to for those of you who don't know i run a theater company and one of our missions is to give money back to a local nonprofit organization who believes the way that we believe and for each show that we produce, we match that show with um, the nonprofit organization. And we were doing a show at that time called Next Fall. And it was about a young gay man who was struggling with his Christianity and his being gay. And we heard about Land of the Sky through Wild Goose Festival, I believe, and their commitment to welcoming everyone. And that, um, what we hear in the welcome statement is very true and that's what i heard and that's what drew me to come so in in choosing land of the sky as that nonprofit, i had to also find out if they were who they said they were so i came and spent some time talking with sarah and with amanda and then attended a couple of services just so i could know for sure and at some point my family and i stopped just visiting and we started coming every sunday and I felt like I was making friendships and relationships and just getting to know people and feeling at home in a church like I had never felt in the last 20 years. And that was very important to me. But because I started to care so much about Land of the Sky and what it stood for, I wanted to be more involved in that. And they were making big decisions at that time. That was when we were at Kenilworth before we moved over here. So the conversation had started to come up about moving into 15 Overbrook and purchasing this property. And to really be a part of that conversation, I needed to be committed to that church. Nobody wants somebody just coming in off the street and telling you how, to, what, how and what to do in your house, right? So I needed to get, become more involved in Land of the Sky and show my commitment to this place and that I wasn't just passing by and that I was going to stay. And I felt like I wanted my new friends to know also that I felt that way. So about a year after we started attending, my family and I made the commitment to become Threshold Partners. 
And what that meant was I became part of the leadership team. I became part of the ministry support team. I became a very, very involved member in the life of this church. And it's not just about giving your tithes and offering. It's about giving your time. It's about giving your treasures, those things that you hold dear. It's about sharing the best parts of you with the people who become more important to you than people in your everyday lives. And that's what Land of the Sky means to me. And that's why I became a Threshold Partner. If you want to know more about my story in getting here and more about what keeps me here, we'll be over in the conference room following um, snacks and stuff. So get a snack and come in and talk to, I think Shauna is going to be in there with me and come talk to the both of us and we can tell you more about why we're here. Thank you for giving me this short time. <laughs> We have a sting bug. All creatures, great and small, come to land of the sky. <laughs> hey, I'm all in. I was a, I came, became a threshold partner six months after I started coming here. So, time, talent, and treasure, as little as that might be, here I am. Whether we take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, let us listen now for the meaning these words might hold for us this day. The reading from Psalms 107, 1 to 7, 33 through 37. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those God redeemed from trouble are gathered in from the lands, from the east, the west, from the north, and from the south. Some wandered in desert ways, finding no way to uh, inhabited town, hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted within them. Then they cried to God in their trouble, and God delivered them from their distress. God led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. God turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into a thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the wickedness of their inhabitants. God turns a, de a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water, and their God lets the hungry live, and they establish a town to live in. They sow fields, they plant vineyards, and get a faithful yield. The reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23, verses 1 through 12. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to the disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees and sit on Moses' seat, therefore do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues, and they've been greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all students. And all and call no one on no one God on earth, for you have one God, the one in heaven, nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the chosen one. The greatest among you will be your servant. 
All who exalt themselves will be humbled and all who humble themselves will be exalted. May the spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. Amen. I had to look up this word this week, so I just wanted to give a um, phylacteries. Anyone? It's the it's the box. It's the box prayer box they hold. Yeah, right. So it was very interesting. I was like, hmm, that is a word I don't know. So it it goes with um an, like an entire garb that is used um fringes and um but there is a prayer box that um is taken to pr morning prayers and it is used um that is sits on their side anyway good morning land of the sky good morning wow that's good hey y'all it's good to see you good to be back good to have the kids in service yay i don't know what the big deal is sarah like right i don't know what the big deal is i i grew up um in a time where we didn't have children's service. So we had to sit in church uh, when I was a kid. And I was talking to Miss Yolanda earlier, and I was like, you know what? Well, my grandma used to pull my ear if I acted up. She'd be like, you better sit still. And I remember as a child growing up in church, uh, my grandma always had the best candy in the bottom of her pocketbook. And I would get candy, and that would help me like sit still and all the things. But I figure at this point, uh, we're in 2023, if we don't allow the young folks uh, to be young folks, wow, what, what's gonna happen when we get old and they don't wanna deal with us, huh, right? So uh, I'm, I'm tickled to see so many uh, young children and let them do what they're doing. It ain't gonna bother me, I'm a mom of four there's uh, there isn't much I haven't seen uh, and had to deal with on my journey uh, as a mama uh, and trying to be a preacher raising up these kids in church there ain't nothing like a PK y'all ain't nothing like a PK Woo! I'm trying to tell you my kids would be acting up we would have the worst time in the morning right before church everything was going wild everybody wilding out nobody want to get up right Y'all know what I'm talking about on Sunday. And then we had to put on our church face because mama got to preach. Mama's a pastor. Y'all better not act up, right? And so we would go to church. So there ain't much I haven't seen. You don't bother me with moving around and getting up. Like that stuff is just so, it's so beyond me at this point um, in my life. And and thank God I have uh, four grownish children who survived being PKs and are very good humans in the world. Uh, so uh, thank y'all for being here today. And um, Stephanie, I got the same thing from our dear friend, Sarah, uh, be profound yet profoundly brief. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to hit it and quit it because I know there's a lot going on uh, today in service and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be brief. You've heard the, the scriptures read for you. Uh, we'll talk a little bit around the Matthew passage of scripture this morning. Pray with me, God. Woo, we thank you for the breath of life. Mm. Thank you. We woke up this morning. Gained an hour of our time back. Hallelujah. Yes. Found our way down the road. Down Tunnel Road over to Overbrook. And here we are situated in this place together. We appreciate life, health, and strength. We appreciate the fellowship. We appreciate the chatter of the young children, the mamas and daddies and aunties and uncles, grandmas and grandpas trying to raise these babies. Thank you. And God, we pause for a moment because we need to think about our brothers and sisters overseas and everything that's happening. We not only wanna 
know what's happening, but we need to feel it in our bodies that we can do better than this. We can love better than this. We can do better than this. So for those experiencing war all over the land, we pray, we hold them, and we are whispering to ourselves right now, we can never let these things happen in our world. God, we know preaching ain't easy. Mm -mm. Preaching ain't easy. Even in the Bible, it talks about how foolish preaching can be. So I'll be a fool today. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that comes so quickly. And we thank you for our elder brother, JC, Jesus the Christ, in his name we pray, amen. So recently, um, I was reading where an editor of a magazine received this letter uh, from a woman. She was uh, asking for help dealing with the issue she had with her sister. I don't know how many of y'all got sisters. Uh-huh, so you might, you might find some of this uh, to resonate with you. I have a brother, love him so much, my big brother, um, took good care of his little sister and still does today. But anyhow, this sister wrote and she said that um, her sister had chosen to go into a, she and her sister had chosen to go into very different professions in life. Might be the same for you and your sister, right? She had gone into a for-profit business and her younger sister had been working um, for various nonprofit organizations, doing the good work in the world. And so the elder sister was proud of the hard work and the underpay that her younger sister had to deal with. She said, my sister's doing good work in the world. She even, uh, the older sister even helped her younger sister financially, uh, often buying plane tickets to come home to visit the family. and. Uh, but there was some tension that developed between them in their relationship. The younger sister often uh, could only speak of the hard and despairing work that she was doing. Mm, this nonprofit industrial complex is about to take me out. This is hard work. Some of y'all know, some of y'all in nonprofit, so you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? So when the elder sister is... Um, uh, is able to be most gracious, she recognized that uh, it probably means the younger sister is working too hard and doesn't have anybody to talk to about the things that are happening in her world, in her work, in her life. Elder sister would be happy to continue to be an ear for her younger sister um, if this seemed to be the only issue. But it seems like something more is going on with the younger sister. Whenever the elder sister talks about, uh, you know, the regular stuff of life, right? Renovations on the house, office, office politics, vacations they've been on, that kind of thing. The younger sister cuts her off. She always brings the conversation back to her advocacy work and the work that she's doing with her nonprofit. Elder sister even tried to talk about uh, something as simple as a show she watches on Netflix. Sister shit says she ain't even have time to watch Netflix. I'm too busy fundraising for my organization. I ain't got time to watch Netflix. It's a privilege that you're able to watch Netflix, but I can't even stop for a moment to watch a TV show. Now, being passionate about, uh, about hard work isn't the problem here, y'all. And somebody uh, should be helping, you know, orphans and, and, and folks who are uh, houseless and whatever the nonprofit mission is. Like, folks, we ought to be doing that. When folks are hungry, we ought to feed them. When folks don't have shelter, we ought to provide shelter. That's not the point here. Someone should be willing to process the difficult and frustrating work that this younger sister is doing with her. But the magazine editor, you know, wondered if the younger sister might actually be getting um, uh, something out of dominating their conversations 
by describing the immense challenges in the lives of the people she serves. So the editor wrote back to the sister, y'all ain't gotta agree with it. Well, I'm gonna tell you what she said. It's not that your younger sister didn't have time to watch Netflix because she is simply incapable of enjoying her own life while somebody else suffers. She chooses not to make time for re relaxation and entertainment so that she can play the martyr around anyone who does. And friends, I'm here to let y'all know this is us in the church. You ain't got to like me because I got Sarah on my side. <laughs> so I know that's hard to hear. I know that's hard to hear. I know that's hard to hear. The editor realized that it would probably be hard for the sister to hear too. Mm -hmm. But she thinks it's worth pointing out that the younger sister, if the younger sister uh, uh, has come to rely on feeling holier than thou, either to survive the difficulty of her work or, or, or to help her feel more important around her wealthier sister, that is a very unhealthy place to be in. And I'm here to let y'all know, some of us Christians are in very unhealthy places. The younger sister won't be able to do her work well or be able to maintain good relationships with her family acting like this. Advocacy and service are necessary in order for the world to survive. I told you, when people are hungry, we ought to feed them. When folks don't have shelter, we ought to provide shelter. When folks don't have clothing, we ought to provide clothing. That's not the point. Our advocacy and our service are necessary and we ought to be quick to do it but you shouldn't do it to make yourself look good. You shouldn't do it to make yourself feel better. You shouldn't do it to pat yourself on the back. You shouldn't do it to get out of boys and out of girls for the things that we are doing for those who are suffering. That's not what we ought to be doing. And for far too long in the Christian church, that's exactly what we have been doing. All of these things to make ourselves look good, make ourselves feel better, and at the expense of those who are furthest from justice, because we got churches on every corner USA and more impoverished people around these said churches USA over and over further perpetuating the problems that we see in our society. Y'all ain't got an amen. I know I'm talking right. So the tension between living a public life of virtue and receiving position or, 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 or position and positive attention uh, for your uh, uh, virtuousness is the center of Jesus' critique of his community's religious leaders today. This portion of Matthew starts out with a statement of affirmation that some might find surprising. Jesus said straight up, right? The first thing he said is that he believes the Pharisees and the scribes can actually offer a sound interpretation of their religious tradition. Yeah, he did. He said that they sit at the feet of Moses. They're sitting with Moses. They are bringing a word to the people of God. Listen to those words. Those are good words. Those are good words coming out of their mouth. Jesus said that the teaching wasn't necessarily the problem. It ain't what you're teaching. It's how you practice it. Not what you're saying. It's how you wear it. Right? He said the problem was uh, with how they are living out that teaching. He said... He said it before, if you've been in church a couple of Sundays a, a year, you've probably heard it, that they are too rigid in their application of religious law, making it hard for ordinary people to ever truly follow these rules. This created a great burden on people, a burden that, uh, uh, that could have been lifted with some grace from their leaders. He said that they wore uh, uh, fancy versions of, uh, of certain symbols of their faith, right? The little bag that, that Sarah talked about, prayer shawls, getting all dolled up with big crosses around their neck, right? Y'all don't, I'm not, nobody here knows what I'm talking about. 
in order to make sure people thought they were devout. He was critical of people who accepted uh, the places of honor that came with being seen as a leader with actually, without actually doing the work. Jesus understood leadership to be directly tied to service, service to be directly tied to easing the greatest burdens on the lives of everyday ordinary people. If what we do is not easing the burden of everyday ordinary people, we might need to go back to the river and take another dip and come back with a new plan for our community. If we're not easing the burden, we need to go back and rethink this thing, read through these gospels again, reorient ourselves to our elder brother JC and figure out a different path. He had no patience for leaders who wanted to acclaim but, but did not actually serve their neighbors. Advocacy, service, they are foundational to our faith, y'all. Did you know that? Foundational to our faith. But you don't wear symbols of your faith to simply show off how much of a Christian you are. Matter of fact, most of the time when you see me out on the street, I got on a pair of Chuck Taylors and blue jeans, okay? A toboggan or a head scarf, listening to rap music. Very, very rarely do you see me with a cross around my neck, a collar or a robe, because I need people to know who I am in the world and not try to elevate me as somebody higher than what I am. I'm just ordinary people trying to do ordinary things. But when you don't know what happens in the trenches, sometimes you might puff yourself up, make your ego big. I've done these things in my community. Meanwhile, folks are still suffering War still going on all over the land. Racism running rampant. Here we are about to be in political season, y'all. You know what's up. You watch TV, you see the nonsense happening. The division, right? I know I'm saying these things in front of kids. These babies doing good. Look at these babies, y'all. They just doing what young people do. Ain't it beautiful? So advocacy, service foundational. We don't need to be showboaty. That's what my grandma used to call it. Quit trying to showboat. <laughs> Quit trying to show off, right? But just be humble, meek and lowly, humble, just like our elder brother JC. You wear these things to remind yourself, not others, right? This is what we should be doing, to remind yourself of your commitment to God. Your commitment to loving your neighbor as yourself. Your commitment to walking this thing out in the world. Your commitment to anti-racism. Your commitment to making sure that the least of these are elevated in such a way that they don't ever have to see poverty anymore. Your commitment. You remind yourself. It's not to parade around to remind the world of who you are, but it should be to remind you of who you are. So whether or not, you know, we are official leaders in community, whatever that means, um, we will, you, you're gonna have to decide how to balance, you know, this, uh, 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 this faith of yours with a gracious interpretation of your faith in a country where there is still a privilege uh, in being known as a Christian. We better recognize it. We still have some privileges as Christian believers that other folk all around the world don't get to experience. We get to show up in here this morning, right? Not worried about our safety, not worried about what might happen to us. Plenty of other folks of different faiths who want the same privileges that you and I are able to experience right now in this room, right now today. 
How will we use that privilege to serve our neighbors and not just serve ourselves? We've got to make sure that our faith is really for God, for our neighbors, and not just for show. Pray with me. In this moment, God, we ask for a quick ego death. Decrease us. Decrease our ego. And when we feel that ego swelling back up, remind us of who we are. Remind us of our elder brother, JC. Remind us that this is trench work and we got to get our hands dirty. This ain't for cute folks. This is for those who want to do the work, putting our hands to the gospel and saying that we will not continue in the way that we have been. So God, renew our, renew our faith, renew our commitment, renew our joy, renew our faith, renew our community so that we can be the folks you want us to be. So we can be available for one another. So we won't be in competition with each other. but that we know we are loved, therefore we ought to love. It's in the name of Jesus I pray, amen. Amen.
A couple of, um, I, I didn't turn on this part yet, sorry. That's why that's doing that. Uh, a couple of months, not even like a month and a half ago, I said, hey, will you guys play this for all saints? <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm deeply grateful for a music team um, that takes music from out in the world and brings us into um, intentional holy space uh, with the sounds and songs of the spirit. As we prepare friends to come to the table, I invite you to join with me in the unison prayer printed in your bulletin. Will you pray with me? God of the lessons taught and the truths laid out, why do we act as though you've been silent and refused to speak? Forgive us for the ways we have called ourselves students and followers, but refuse to practice what we have learned. Hearts, minds, and souls. Abundant love giving and pouring out of grace. Let those lessons be deep in our bones that we might humble ourselves in the midst of a world where might is demanding to be right. Let us lead by the lessons you have taught us so that all may know the way of the still speaking God, the suffering Christ, and the spirit that soars. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Friends, the promises of God are that we are forgiven for the ways that we create our distance, that we run and hide. There is no place where we go where God does not wish to abide with us. May we know the powerful presence of God and God's grace poured out to us each and every day as we awake to a new sunrise to see indeed that a new day dawns. This is God's promise. Let us live from it as forgiven people. Amen. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. In Christ, God breaks down the walls that makes us strangers to ourselves and divide us from one another. We are the body of Christ. At this table, we bear witness to our faith. At this table, God brings wholeness out of the darkness and healing to our world. Let us break bread together. Will you join with me in prayer? Many other people have gone before us and are with us even now. A great cloud of witnesses who with their lives show us how to be followers of Jesus. People who have stood up for what is right, no matter what the risk or the cost. People who with their every breath or even just for moments tried to love God every day. We are all part of the communion of saints. Like others who have gone before us, we hear Jesus calling us to change us and to be changed, to reform and to be reformed, to challenge the church and to allow ourselves to be challenged that we might better serve you as the body of Christ. Born into the world through the expanse of the womb, to the experience of the waters of baptism for many of us, to live and breathe in the ways of Jesus, to release our living into the arms of the eternal promises. God sent Jesus to share our life and to journey with us, to show us to live as God wants. Through prayer, acts of justice, kindness, and your word, O oh God, and this holy meal, we seek to be more like Jesus every day. We seek to practice what he preached, with his words and actions, Jesus taught that the ways of God are different from the ways of the world. We are called to be peacemakers, to hunger and thirst for what is right, to show mercy to others. When we do these things, when we take on this way of living, we are to do 
Or indeed, God, out of these ordinary acts, you make extraordinary things. When we do these things, we are holy, we are saints. And Jesus invites the saints and the sinners to dine with him and be his friends. Jesus invites us, oh God, thank you, the saints and sinners to this sacred meal in which we can taste and see the goodness of our God. We ask, oh God, that you would send your spirit upon us that this day we may know Christ in the breaking of the bread and that in word and deed, we may be channels of your love and peace and justice in the world. As your children, O oh God, help us to be more like Jesus in all we do. Bless your people everywhere, the saints in every time and place, and help us to know your love, not only in this moment, but in every moment of our lives. We proclaim you, O oh God, as we pray, pray together the prayer Jesus taught printed in your bulletin or in the words that you choose, our creator in heaven, Holy is your name, your realm come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let us not fall into temptation and deliver us from evil. For the realm, the power and the glory are yours now and forever, amen. amen. On the night of betrayal and desertation and on the eve of his death, Jesus renewed God's covenant promise. He took bread, offering the blessing, broke it, and gave it to those who sat at the table with him saying, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then at the close of the meal, he poured the cup of blessing, raised it in thanks to God and passed it among them, saying, drink of this cup, all of you. Do so in remembrance of me. In thanks and praise to God, whose love for us is mirrored in the lives of all who have ever struggled to live faithfully. Mm. Thank you, God, as an expression of our love for God and all siblings in faith and hope who proclaim another way of being and doing is possible. Young and old, rich and impoverished, and in remembrance of all the meals Jesus shared with saints and sinners and sinners who were saints, you are invited. You all are invited to the feast in joy and harmony. I would like to invite our communion servers forward. Friends, this is the feast of God for the people of God. Come, now things are all ready. After you take your bread and your cup, you are invited to hang your um, angels or your doves. I'll give you a sample. This is me. You'll just come back here. You'll watch this cord over here. You won't. Oh, wait. Come, for things are now ready.
It's been so long since we have been together in this place. Lifted voices up in praise or greet a smiling face. We are the same people still, but we are not the same as what we know turned upside down. We trust in what remains. We are held in the sacred story of beloved community of laughter, tears, and faithful work to dream God's glorious dream. Yet even though we're far apart, our faith tells us somehow our God is holding us together now. Learning how to be the church in new and different ways. Knowing that the love we share will give us strength today. We work for justice, love, and hope of all have what they need to what God wills comes to the world for righteousness and peace. We are held in the sacred story of beloved community of laughter, tears, and faithful work to dream God's glorious dream. Yet even though we're far apart, our faith tells us somehow our God is holding us together Let us pray. Oh God, through this bread and this cup, you have made us one with you and with each other. 
May the unity we find at this table be a gift that we carry out into our suffering, divided world. Help us to find strength in knowing that you, the God of peace, will always be with us. Amen. Amen. Check, 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 check. Wow. Wow. It's working. Do you guys got more? All right. Um, I'm going to hope that this gets turned down a little bit. Hey, y'all. I invite y'all to rise in body and or spirit as you are able and join us in singing our closing song. You, of course, can look in your bulletin, I mean, in your hymnals, but I'm not sure you'll need to. Are y'all ready? I mean, you all know this little light of mine, right? This little light of mine. Oh, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. All right, let's stop our clapping. We're on one and three, y'all. We're gonna move. This little light of mine. There we go. Two and four. Woohoo! This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This joy that I have. This joy that I have. I'm gonna let it shine This joy that I have I'm gonna let it shine This joy that I have I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it shine This love that I have This love that I have I'm gonna let it shine this love that I have, I'm going to let it shine. This love that I have, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This hope, this hope that I have, I'm going to let it shine. This hope that I have, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This faith, this faith that I have, I'm gonna let it shine. This peace that I have, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this peace that I have, I'm gonna let it shine. This peace that I have, there y'all are. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And back to this little light. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it shine Woo! All right, friends, you're invited to Remain standing as you are able. What are you, what you got? Oh, the, oh no, the t we're supposed to be two and four. It was one and three there? I just followed along. I felt like it was good, whatever the case was. No, I, mo I, didn't, I wasn't doing well. Ah. 
All right, friends. Um, just a reminder, pop-up snacks in the hallway. Then um, we'll tear off for a um, conversation about Threshold Partnership in the conference room if you'd like. Um, have a beautiful week. You'll hear um, or you'll see some slides go through with announcements afterwards if you want to catch some things. And otherwise, we'll see you at pop-up snacks. And for the blessing from Lashana. Amen. Why don't you reach your hands up into the sky like you're reaching for the great cloud of witnesses, like you're reaching for your grandma and your auntie and those great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us. Reach for them, y'all, because they're with us. They're all around us. They're cheering us on and they're saying, hey, y'all, you got work to do. Don't let your ego be puffed up. Get out here and do the work. Right? Keep your hands up if you can. God bless you. God keep you. God's face shine upon you. Give you peace. Give you joy. Give you love. Give you community. Give you laughter. Until we meet again. Go in peace. Go in love. And let the spirit of our elder brother JC hold you, rock you like a mother would rock her child. From this day until we meet again, everybody said amen. amen. Say it again, amen. amen. And one more time, amen. amen. Go in peace. Amen.